your Thursday evening. It's three past five. Liana and Josh here. Thanks so much for tuning in. Remember the text machine number 8168 with the keyword life if you need to fire through a question or a comment. But that's not the only place, is it, Josh? Uh, no, uh, we're going live in a minute. Uh, we um, are going to be chatting with Ian McInnes, the CEO of Tier Fund. So uh, if you want to um, just comment on our live stream uh, with any question you've got, uh, perhaps it's about what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, perhaps it's uh, a little bit about what um, Tier Fund's great work is over there and over in that part of the world, then uh, you can start to fire those through now. Um, so, yeah, jump online if, um, if you want to. Uh, that is just Life FM on Facebook. Okay. Am I going to keep up with the live or do you want to take responsibility for that, for all the hard-hitting oh, questions? I'm happy to... Just keep eyes on it. As the self-proclaimed <laughs> admin king, I Whoa. will look after that side of things. That's crazy because <laughs> no one has ever called you that before. Okay, the most admin I did today was check the mail and then I went through the... Um, Junk mail nice, to make sure yeah. to just check about emails what it or was. Real mail? No, this is like real mail, and <laughs> yeah. then put the I put all of the right things, just all of the junk mail, straight in the recycling bin and kept the letters to read. And that was that's my. You should admin. get a no junk mail sign on your letterbox. Thought that about it, but I like the bit. um I like getting the um Domino's deals. Okay, so you do keep some of the circulars. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't this time because I don't plan on having Domino's. So they send a lot as well. But, and there wasn't any great deals. But wow. I was, sometimes you do get a really good deal. You're Your like, personality wow, really shines when you keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I might put that on my CV, actually, that I do have admin skills. <laughs> yeah, you oh, do. I can tell what's junk mail and what's not. Nice. I love that for you. Okay, jump on the Facebook Live now, and uh, we'll be starting it basically... Right Basically now, now, yeah, and uh, we're chatting to Ian McInnes from Tier Fun next. This is Surfaces. It's a good day on life. It's an absolute privilege to have in the studio with us right now uh, the CEO of Tier Fund, Ian McInnes. Welcome to the studio, Ian. Yeah, thanks, Josh and Liana. Great to be here. 
Uh, yeah, very good to uh, have you in. Uh, unfortunate circumstances that we've uh, got you in. We are talking uh, about the situation in Ukraine. Tier Fund, uh, one of many organisations running a campaign uh, for Tier Fund uh, for the people of Ukraine. Mm. Mm. So, um, f- I mean, everyone's heard about what's happened pretty much. But uh, f- <laughs> give us an overview of the last week or so and the country of Ukraine. Mm. Yeah, look, I mean, I think it's a moving moving feast daily now. You've got a country of forty one million people. Wow. The Russian Federation went went in from the north, the east, the south, as people would have seen on the television screens, and have hit it really hard. This was Putin's war, the one he, he th- said he wasn't going to do, uh, and he has. And now you've just got um, millions of people moving about inside the Ukraine and over its borders. So yesterday it was nine hundred thousand refugees across neighbouring countries. As of today, that that number's topped a million. Um, the UN estimates probably up to another seven to eight million people will displace um, inside the country. So it is enormous numbers of uh, Europeans, which is quite, quite, quite unprecedented, on the move across Europe's borders and within the Ukraine. What happens next for those people? Obviously, they're just refugees in another country. What yeah. Least, yeah, like. I mean, it's unbel- I mean, they will be. They are arriving in countries like Slo- Slovakia and Poland and mm. Romania and Moldova and you know, in Hungary and um, being taken into reception centres or in by people in their own homes or into wow. churches and schools. And we have a partner in Slovakia who works with us. Normally they work in poorer parts of, say, Africa or Asia, this this particular aid agency. Now they've had to turn their attention right there at home in Slovakia to mm. a caring for Ukrainian refugee families. Some of those staff have taken Ukrainian families into their own homes um, and they are mobilising uh, uh, schools and, and church networks now to be able to provide food, water, basic shelter. Mm. It's winter there. It's got warm coats, oh. you know, and just take care of these families in the first instance while well, they try to figure out what they do next. They're taking 10,000 uh, a day in, wow. uh, in Slovakia as a country. Uh, and that's not unusual for the surrounding countries at the moment. So what does that look like? That must be crazy to... Not only for Ukrainians, obviously, that's a crazy situation, but it must also be crazy for Polish people and for Slovakians mm. who are going to school as per usual, sort of still having to deal with the pandemic um, and also now having just huge thousands upon thousands of people turning up on their doorstep, essentially. I mean, what has really impressed me is the um, speed with which, say, the EU have moved to make ensure that they don't have to all stand in queues for asylum. So, so yeah. one good thing is they've been allowed to stay for a year, and that can potentially convert to up to three years. They can work, right. uh, they can live normally, they can access services. So that's great. But yeah, absolutely. If you're your average Slovakian family, you know, mm. and you and you've got people filing past in the street, is what's going on? And you're making the call. We've got a spare room. Shall we? Shall we offer it up and take? Mm take someone in and I think that is exactly what families are having having to decide now and they do see Ukrainians very much as their brothers and sisters and, oh, and so, so it's united it they're, they're, they're like united like they're really passionate and keen to help I think they are. I don't, have, I don't think I've ever seen Europe more, more united, which is in one sense it's a shame on maybe how they normally treat refugees mm. trying to make it into right. the European Union. But it does say in this instance it's a wonderful thing. We will look after our own um, in, in this case. And the very sad part is Russia is nominally also sort of part of Europe and you're right. just driving yeah. Ukrainians over their western border. Because I did hear um, Beatty talking about how his dad is in Romania at the moment and a really positive thing is the the open hearts and the open homes that people in those countries are giving the refugees. They're just like, yeah, we'll help, yeah, we'll accept you into our family, into our country, you know, doing whatever it is to make it easy. Which is beautiful, but yeah. I mean, well, my, my worry, still hard. My worry is what happens a year from now. We'll all we'll mm. remember back to Syria and Angela Merkel and, and the German government opening up their arms, you know, fast yeah. forward a year, two years, and you've got real anxiety within the German population about the number of Syrians, Syrians they took yeah. and, you know, and the backlash begins. So what, yeah. what happens when the Ukrainians are accused of taking their jobs and filling their right. homes and uh, loading up their, their social services, and yet it's not, not their fault. No. That, no. That, that, that that it's not their children's fault. <laughs> You know, yeah. they've up and fled. And so I really do hope that, that that heart for humanity stays as long as possible. Amen. Yeah, well, that must be a, a real problem. Not, not a problem, but something that you guys must have to deal with a lot is somewhere like, for example, everyone's talking about Ukraine right now, right? And, and you guys have got a massive appeal and, and people can donate to that right now. It's right on the banner. But the, there's so many other places, like Syria, that was so in the news and so in the forefront of what we were talking about uh, two years, even one year ago, um, but now it's sort of fallen by the wayside. Um, I guess 
is the is some of the money that you guys will raise from this is that like is that going to help long term as well as helping right now um it will help long term so it'll help in the ukraine now and in the long term now how do we sustain these other things we're working on in syria or you may remember you know it's not that long since we had a a volcano and a tsunami in tonga so you know we're of course still we'll work there for about a year look we're re, we're realistic that the news media peaks on certain things we raise our money in that time it grabs people's attention yeah um you know their hearts go out so we'll raise our funding. In all reality, we'll raise 70% of what we normally raise in the first 15 days. We'll spend it over the course of a year or more. Oh, that's great. You know, uh, and that's just the way the way this works. People's attention can only go in so many directions. It is yeah. a little sad, though, that, of course, you know, there are other, other forgotten crises across this yeah. planet that get next to no attention, and we know that, and you don't have to dig too far to find, yes. you know, uh, drought and famine in the Sahel and down into Somalia and the problems in Afghanistan. They have not gone away, yeah. you know, since the Taliban came to power, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Um, Ian McKenna, CEO of TFM, with us at the moment. Sticking around uh, for a little longer, um, if you are watching online right now, uh, feel free to drop a comment in the well, drop a comment in the comment section. Um, mm-hmm. A question for Ian uh, about the Ukraine, about what's going on. He's happy to answer them. Uh, you can also text us eight one six eight with the word life at the beginning of your question. But we will be answering some questions about Ukraine and about what's going on there coming up next. Hello, everyone who is watching online on Facebook right now. Um, we have just wrapped up. On, well, this is not going to on to the radio, by the way. Uh, but thanks for joining us. Um, if you have a question for Ian, he's happy to answer them. We're going to be answering some more questions coming up next. So uh, drop a comment in the comment section. We'd, uh, we'd love to hear from you. And we've got a little bit of other work to, to do behind the scenes. That's why it's just me at the moment. Um, and we've got to go on back on air in um, two minutes. But thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. And please um, continue to, to view and enjoy. <laughs> <laughs>
it is great to be with you on this fine, fine Thursday afternoon. It is 20 past five, and um, we have got a Facebook Live going, so thanks to those who have tuned in on, obviously, the Life FM Facebook page. And we are here with Ian from Tear Fun. Ian, thank you so very much for spending time and... Um, I'm sure you're excited to answer the hard-hitting questions that people were asking. Look forward to this part. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. um, So, uh, tearfund.org.nz. If you want to help out with the uh, appeal for the situation in Ukraine, it's an emergency and Mm. uh, just crazy times for the people of Ukraine. Um, And uh, so, so quite a good uh, first question here that leads into that uh, is: What can we practically do from here in New Zealand? Uh, Yeah. Well, of course, the first thing is pray, pray for peace in the Ukraine. I mean. How did we get to war uh, like like this in a modern day in Europe? So pray for the leaders uh, mm. in Russia, pray for President Putin, pray for the leadership in the Ukraine, pray for the leadership across the EU and making having to make daily decisions now around sanctions, refugees and all mm. that type of thing. And then pray, of course, for the poor people of the Ukraine who are on the move daily now and people will have seen the shots of people heading into the subway to take shelter yeah. from bombs, trying to get onto a trains. I mean, you have situations here where the men are putting, in many cases, women, wives and children on the on the trains. This is not a sexist thing. They're sending them off to shelter. They are required to stay mm. behind if they're between the ages of 18 and 60 men, wow. and they are now required to fight for um, Compulsory. the sovereignty of the train. Yeah, this I is, can imagine this if that is, happened in this your is country. This brace hey. conscription of every male in the Ukraine now wow. in order to fight for the territory. Yeah. Can, fe- can females sign up if they want to? They can, they, can't they? They can, and there is about one third of the Ukrainian military force at the moment is made up of women. Wow. So there are there are a large number of women also volunteering um, to fight extra uh, large numbers more than you would get in most other European uh, forces. Yeah, wow. It's just a horrible, horrible situation because yeah. you know that lives are going to be lost. Like we know yeah. that the answer yeah, isn't war, yeah. and it's hard to watch because you're just like. What are you up to? <laughs> I know. Yeah. The, other what thing, the, other, the other thing people can do, of course, is to give. Go to the Tear Fund yeah. site and give. And people do feel paralysed. You know, we're at Tear Fund. We'll, we'll convert that into immediate aid. Uh, I think someone, mm. you had a question here about COVID. Yes. Uh, oh, yes, about um, the pandemic. Yeah, so we've got one that says, uh, what's the state of the pandemic in Ukraine and how is that complicating things? Uh, okay, I'll tie that in with where I'm going. One, it, it complicates things enormously because it mm. makes rolling out uh, a broad-based vaccination you know, and booster program nigh impossible now. Right. Uh, and really the problem is health clinics have just been decimated. They're collapsing as is all other infrastructure under, under bombardment and under sort of territorial mm. change from the Ukrainian army to the Russian Federation. So really the health system is on the, on the brink of collapse. So our second big area, besides taking in refugees and bordering countries, is um, putting mobile health clinics and makeshift field hospitals right. into the Ukraine. And we have a partner called International National Health Partners who are, who are doing exactly that at the moment. They're very experienced. They've been working since 2014 in those eastern breakaway states where Russia's been at war for some time now. So they'll be helping not only to, I guess... Uh, with the wounded and, and that sort of thing, but also uh, vaccinations for COVID and, and They're that. actually pumping medicines now into into the border as soon as they can move them across the border mm. and get them into clinics. They'll be basically arming um, public health facilities with the necessary medicines, um, vaccinations in, uh, included, right. to carry on um, a, a primary health care response in the Ukraine. Yeah, so you, there's actually you know, practical things that we can do. Sometimes we feel hopeless or helpless, but we can actually help. So well, that's, you guys have made it easy, tearfund.org.nz. There's a whole emergency appeal on there. Boom. Donate and that's, now. that's the way you've got to think about it too, is it's yeah. not just a donation towards Tear Fund. While that yeah. is a great, is a great organisation to give <laughs> yeah. to, you think about it like, okay, I'm giving $100 or $200 or whatever to Tear Fund, um, but it's actually providing like medicines mm. and vaccinations like, you know, to, uh, to actual people, you know, and, and that's the way you've got to think about it, I think. Mm. Um, okay, do we, this is an interesting one. Um, do we know what's happening within Russian borders? So I, I guess, yeah, do we know how things are going there? To less of an extent, I mean, the conflict is hottest on the border between Russia and the Ukraine and the, ne- the nearest towns. And so we would expect... And there has been some uh, refugees flow back into Russia, which is which is interesting. But you have Russian-speaking Ukrainians who who really affiliate quite strongly with Russia, and so some of them will head east across the Russian border. Uh, inside Russia, I mean, like any country at war, but particularly in Russia, they're just running a propaganda machine like there's no tomorrow. So yeah. you know they are feeding, right. unfortunately, to their own people their own version. Uh, of the conflict. They're not allowed to call it war. Um, they are issuing licenses. Well, they are issuing um, ultimatums and shutting down, you know, 
radio networks and television yeah. stations yeah, who are, yeah, yeah, aren't, yeah. aren't complying with the party line at the moment. So I think you're going to increasingly hear two stories, the one told inside Russia and the one told outside Russia about wow. what's going on in the Ukraine. Mm. Seems crazy in the sta- like now that we have internet and everything, eh? That that can still kind of happen. Yeah, I, it's, um, it's crazy. Are we hearing? Oh, sorry. What are you hearing from church leaders who have chosen to stay in Ukraine? Well, not much. We didn't really have established church uh, networks. That said, I did see the other day um, church pastors and congregants gathering in the subway uh, and singing gospel songs and praying, you know, for the security of their country. Mm. And I just seen, and I have heard stories to this effect of churches and Christians just rallying across mm. the Ukraine to just sort of soak the Ukraine in prayer and to pray, and mm. to pray for peace. So uh, I got the sense from that there's a very strong and vibrant church um, uh, in places across the Ukraine. And of course, Ooh. there is a very strong and vibrant church. It goes back a long time to sort yes. of more, more ro- Russian Orthodox traditions and you have evangelicals and Catholics sort of mm. in there in significant numbers now as well. So there will be many Christians among the Ukrainian population for whom God is the first place they'll turn mm. for safety and, and refuge in, in these days. Mm-hmm. And that's like all of us say, even if we're feeling frightened or anxious about the future to come and if we want to be helping that prayer and standing with our brothers and sisters who live in the Ukraine is something that we can do too. And giving, um, tearfund.org.nz. Yeah. Um, I just love Tear Fund's slogan, you know, faith in action. And, I, and I think this is, this is a real opportunity to put your faith into action. We um, couldn't. We couldn't do it without the supporters. The supporters who listen to the lights of Life FM and and back us um, to do this work. So you know, it's good Christian folks across New Zealand to get them behind that action, and make it possible. Cool. Uh, thank you so very much, Paul. It's been a pleasure to have you in here. And um, yeah, we'll keep praying and tearfund.org.nz to show your support. Uh, tēnā koe. Thank you very much. Thank you.